Uh, Cage Warriors. Cage Warriors 106, Knight of Champions. Uh, for those unlucky few of you uh, uh, who are a bit unaware, this was quite possibly Cage Warriors' best, uh, best card ever. Uh, it featured not one, not two, not five, but six uh, title fights, which is on. I mean, I've personally never heard of that many title fights. Uh, but yeah, there was a lot, a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, the biggest story is, of course, the the main event between uh, Scott Miz, Ross Houston, the reigning champ, and interim champ uh, Nicholas Dalby from uh, Denmark, former UFC fighter, who some of you may recognize. This was a bloodbath. From a, like in the very first round, Houston uh, used a slicing elbow, chopped up, uh, uh, opened a cut in Dolby's uh, forehead, and it was—I mean, it wasn't like necessarily in a super bad spot, but it was just like it was big. Uh, and then I think it was in the second round, Dolby connected with a uh, really, really hard strike that. Uh, very clearly broke Houston's nose, so his nose was just gushing blood. And then they started grappling, and it was just... I mean, yeah, I mean, it was a literal bloodbath. Uh, because that's actually kind of what happened. Referee Mark Goddard made the, in my opinion, correct call, completely correct call. Uh, to call off a fight due to, like, like, I mean, they were slipping and sliding around in their own blood. And it's this is a kind of fight that... Like, if my relatives see this, this is exactly what I'm going to have to defend myself from uh, the next family gathering or Christmas or something like that. Uh, they'll they'll t start talking about that fight and, uh, yeah, I'll never hear the end of it. Uh, but it's a shame that the fight ends the way it does, obviously, and this perhaps creates some problems for, uh, for Dolby in particular, who I'm sure the UFC were kind of looking at. Uh, as we are planning on coming to Copenhagen in September. I'm sure that if he won this fight, unified with titles, I'd, and I think he had, what was it, two or three straight wins before this, I'd be pretty sure that he'd be uh, given a UFC contract. Now, he has since suggested that uh, they have a rematch, because everyone wants to see a rematch. Houston, Dolby, Cage Warriors for fans, everyone wants to see a rematch, because it was a great fight, uh, but just, you know, unfortunately ended uh, the way it did. Dolby suggested them having uh, a rematch in uh, in Copenhagen at the UFC card. And I say yes. That is the exactly right call to make. Um, this fight, I mean, for the blood alone, uh, will, will have brought a lot of attention to it. Uh, I feel that uh, Dolby, he, he he does deserve a second shot in the UFC. He has been doing very well outside of it. Uh, his only loss outside of the UFC was a close split decision to current UFC fighter Carlo Pettisorli Jr. Uh, <clears throat> and I say let these welterweights, perhaps uh, uh, you know, some somewhere on the undercard or something like that, let them both make their UFC debut, give them a shot. You can maybe even have like a special clause in a contract that like only the winner gets the UFC contract, perhaps something like that. Because I mean, maybe the UFC aren't that interested in signing two debut like two uh, new fighters uh, who are coming off of a no contest, which is understandable. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, the UFC should uh, sign both these guys for a rematch and let them uh, let them duke it out and. The winner will be the, I mean, they'll be in the UFC, so they won't, you know, have their Cage Warriors titles on the line. But the winner will definitely be the the unofficial uh, Cage Warriors welterweight champ, undisputed. Uh, aside from that, uh, Jai Herbert, wow. Uh, you know, coming into this co-main event, the, the vacant lightweight title was on the line. It was Jack Grant between Jai Herbert. I've seen Jack Grant uh, fight a couple times before. Very exciting style. I know that Cage Warriors were very high on him too. And I think this is the fight that they kind of like thought that uh, Ovi would build up uh, Grant as the next star. Jai Herbert spoiled that party. He looked fantastic in the striking uh, he just he truly found his range in his rhythm really early and just picked Grant apart who did not have an answer for the striking uh, 
uh, another Dane, Mats Blunel, also a former UFC fighter. Uh, he lined up his third straight submission victory uh, when he tapped out the uh, former champion Dean Truman with a Japanese necktie, his second straight Japanese necktie victory. Uh, Burnell looked fantastic. I think he's a very hot candidate for uh, coming back to the, the Copenhagen card, uh, the UFC Copenhagen. I would actually be surprised if they don't re-sign Mats Burnell because sure he lost two out of his three fights in the UFC, but his third loss, I mean he was dominating the fight against Arnold Allen, who is a, a, you know, a really hot contender uh, who's fighting Gilbert Melendez this week. Uh, and it was one of those, I mean, Arnold, had it gone to a decision, uh, Allen, he would have lost, uh, you know, easily. Uh, Burnell, he made um, a stupid mistake and, and he paid for it, but I think it's weird if the UFC would cut him despite such a strong performance. Either way, I think Burnell would be, uh, will be coming back to the UFC uh, for uh, the Copenhagen card. Uh, we also said James uh, Webb versus uh, Nathias Frederick. Unfortunately, uh, a fight marred by controversy. I, I thought it was a very fun, entertaining fight, uh, very different fighting styles. Uh, Webb more sort of methodical and more grappling focused, whereas uh, Frederick was much more of a striker. And when it did go to the ground, uh, it wasn't as much technique as it kind of was like uh, just muscling out and ex exploding out of these situations. Uh, he did pile drive Webb, which ended up uh, uh, getting a point deduction, and then his behavior towards the referee Mark Gardner I thought was pretty, pretty bad too. Uh, we also had Samir Fadin knock out uh, Sam Creasy to win the flyweight title, and we had Lithuanian Modestas Bukowskas defeat Norwegian Martin Hamlet uh, via strikes from fourth round to claim the vacant light heavyweight title. And so, yeah, I mean. Cage Warriors, it's free on Fight Pass, I'm pretty sure. So if you're not watching it already, be sure to, I mean, check it out. It is a quality promotion that's produced stars like Michael Bisping, Dan Harding, you know, uh, Dan Hardy, Joanna Janjajic, Conor McGregor, perhaps. Um, so I would definitely say keep your guys' eyes on Cage Warriors because I do think we will see some future UFC stars come out of there sooner rather than later.